It's Madden NFL 24. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings. And it's coming up next. Well, later tonight in November, snowfall is forecasted to hit the Twin Cities. But right now, calm outside. And of course, a calm day inside U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Today, we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC, as it'll be the New Orleans Saints taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gunn, so pleased to be joined, as always, by Charles Davis. As CD, these Vikings had things rolling in 2022, a 13-4 record, new head coach, an exciting offense, but it all came crashing down in another early playoff exit. And that really was because of the defensive side of the ball. They had a terrific record. Would they win 11 games by one score or less in NFL record? Got to get strong on the defensive side in order to get deeper into the playoffs. And then for the visiting Saints, you know, most people might not realize this. You talk about defenses against the pass last year. The Eagles Super Bowl team, they were number one. But coming in at number two, these New Orleans Saints. Remember, they're led by a defensive-minded head coach, and he plans really well on that side of the ball. Want to see if they can continue that and find some firepower moving the ball on offense. Twenty-two men ready to do battle. It's time to dance. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be led out by a seventh-year pro and a literal rocket scientist. Here's Joshua Dobbs. The secret to his game and his success, incredible chemistry with each and every one of the guys who catches passes with him. And not only does he ask them to stay after practice or meet him before practice, he actually demands it because he knows if they have that kind of chemistry built up, they'll be hard to beat each and every ball game. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Now Dobbs, his throw incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Here's Dobbs to throw. turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and his early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. First and ten, Dobbs. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. Here's second and ten. Here's Dobbs to throw his hands on it but dropped it the rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake third down so much of this game is focus and concentration and whenever i see guys running the in route i know that in the back of their mind they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball back to throw downs I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. 
That's a pretty good opening possession defensively. And you know the goal is to make something of a statement, especially on the road with your first defensive possession, isn't it? Go right out and establish yourselves and let them know this is going to be tough going all game long. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So here come the Saints to take over for the first time. And here's the new man under center after nine seasons as a Raider. Derek Carr is the guy. It's going to take some time to adjust to seeing Carr running out in a new uniform instead of black and silver. It's black and gold. 35,000 yards and over 200 touchdowns with the Raiders. The Saints more than willing to let him air it out all game long to a talented group of pass catchers in the Big Easy. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 11 yards there, just like last play. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. On play action, it's Carr. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll pound it up the middle with Camaro. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. They stay on the ground this time, it's Williams. And he is going to have a Saints first down as he's able to get about three that time on third and inches. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Now a first down carry. It's Camaro. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Again, it's Camara. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. A good running there by Camara on first down as he takes this ahead for a gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down, Camara. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 51 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Here's Carr. And his throw's going to be incomplete. 
Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Throwing now is Carr. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. It hasn't been a real good start to this game from a defensive perspective, but now after the incompletion on second down, things may be changing. If they can come up with one more play, they might be able to get out of it with just a field goal attempt. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Carr. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Johnson. A four-yard pickup. Not enough. Fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop it well short. And his kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Kenny Duagu now out of his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. But the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. On first down, Dobbs to throw. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Dobbs. Flushed out right. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. Big yardage there on the scramble, and it gets him a first down. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised as we just saw there. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And he'll take this down to the 33. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second and six. On play action, it's Dobbs. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Now Dobbs. Steps away to his left. Room here to run. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. Bottom line is that he is just something else as a runner because there are not many QBs in this league who can rip off a game that big. And he did it with the defense giving him a little extra attention after he hit him on a run earlier this series. Yeah. 
to throw is Dobbs. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against a front that's prepared for him to try and take off. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. On the toss, Madison. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Out of the gun, Dobbs. There's Addison. Touchdown, Vikings. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are able to answer the early three points and take a first-quarter lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Now back to throw. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. They need 18 yards here on third down. Here's Carr to throw. Throwing out right here, caught by Alave. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. The defense shaking their heads, not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. And if you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility, so good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact, and he'll go deep. Here's second and three. They run it again with Camara. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. The 71 yards rushing now for Camara. It's a first down. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. Kamara up the middle. And a little room to 
good maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. And that's good for a gain of six. And now we've got a third and three. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. He stiff arms him. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Saints with the football here to begin quarter number two. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. And they'll come up second and seven. A give. This is Kamara. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. This has been a good drive so far. And it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. Now they'll throw with Carr. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the Saints are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Camara diving for the end zone and he'll get there touchdown two good drives on their first two possessions remember the first wound up in a field goal but we all know field goals aren't going to cut it in the NFL so they're not going to be denied here and they wind up punching this one into the end zone Extra point forthcoming. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. And now we're going to get a stoppage as, yeah, that looks like Jackson who's shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek and we'll take a break. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Dobbs looking to throw on first down. And that is incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. Slant route, and he's got Addison. 
They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Madison running on first down. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. If you're in the offensive puddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second down and four. Dobbs is throwing. throw is incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. The offense on third down, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and four. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blank of those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just loft one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 13. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Pressure gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Harrison Smith on the safety blitz, able to get the sack. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. And he gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told. But they're still looking at a fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation. So they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys will get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Oh, the return is Powell. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position. First and 10. Throwing here, Dobbs. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 20. Excellent pickup of 20 yards. 
And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. Now, able to break through that initial contact and winds up getting about three there. It's second down. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Dobbs and a throw here caught by Addison. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. Looking to throw. Dobbs. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Second and goal from the one. Madison is not going to get in. In fact, he'll lose a couple of yards back to the three. It's a loss of two, now third down. And that loss of yards there is not just on him. It's on the guys blocking for him. I mean, they're supposed to create some type of space or at least get a stalemate. They end up letting them through, and they ended up tackling him for a loss. Again, Madison. And this time, he'll work his way in. Touchdown, Vikings. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead, as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating when we have to make the call, they already had it lined up, never even got to it. Joseph now to have the PAT. And that makes it 14 10. So the drive there took six plays, and it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. Now he's having himself a little bit of a banner game. His team right now, though, losing. Needs a little bit of help, and I kind of equate it to a basketball game where you have the big score and sometimes your strategy is okay he can go and have all of his points let's hold down everyone else and that's the way you win the game and right now he needs everyone else to start scoring quote unquote as he's been yeah and he's hoping to keep it close so maybe they can keep it on the ground not start to go through the air as much an incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25 from the gun it's a run for Camaro and he stopped immediately there. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a quarterback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball has moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup.
Now a handoff. Here's Camaro. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right to the team to the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Throwing his car on third down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. DJ Wadham got off his spot quickly and got to the quarterback. And he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. So first and 10 now from the 30. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards. And that'll bring up second down. So they held him to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here's second and seven. Here's Dobbs to throw. And he's going to have the hook up here with Heron. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Here's Dobbs to throw. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. K.J. Osborne, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Back to throw Dobbs. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. They get six, that'll leave him with third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Now Dobbs. Pass taken in by his big tight end. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and ten, Dobbs. Throw out wide is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Second and ten. They'll look to throw again. And Dobbs is going to be swallowed up as he'll go down. Wreaking havoc was Nathan Shepard, the D tackle. That time, Charles, great job keeping him in the pocket and not letting him escape. And Brandon, I think this was a great example 
of the front and the back working together, meaning the back covering, no place to go with the football. And the front, terrific job on the edge, so he couldn't escape outside. And then, of course, the inside pressure kept him hemmed in as well. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. They'll get 19 out of this, but it will still bring up a fourth down. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will stay a four-point game. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, thanks back, as always. Alexander this Madison, one's still in the game, game as we welcome you back to corner number three. Get a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Saints going to go on offense first, and they trail here as we begin quarter number three. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. He had a really solid first half running the football and picking up where he left off here in the third quarter. How about the yardage he's piling up right now? This feels like a full game, not just a series that we're watching right now. I know people are screaming, where are the adjustments from halftime on the defensive side of the ball? Sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes you just got to find a way to tackle someone. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. From the gun, it's Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now a play fake, Carr. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Carr completes it. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is a modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it, 
and catch it with equal proficiency. Carr looking to throw on third and two. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. Not often do fourth down conversions result in 23 yards, but that's the case here. First down. And they were right in that gray area on the edge of long field goal range, maybe too short to punt it. So the defense probably was expecting this was a possibility. They should have been. And in most cases, what you do on defense is you go to what they call punt safe. In other words, you leave your defense on the field, prepare for them to possibly go for it, and then you just have a little bit different responsibilities. You're not really trying to get a big return. You just want to make sure you get the ball back. But they fell asleep at the switch. 120 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. Camara gets it again on second down. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Here's third and a few inches. To throw its car. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, you have to be aware defensively that you've got two goals because obviously you're trying to prevent the touchdown, but you're also trying to keep him from getting a first down as well. That time they weren't up to the task, and it's first and goal. Try to pound it in, Camara. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. Again, Kamara. And I don't think he got in. He did not. They mark him short of the goal line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Can this Vikings D hold up one more time? Third and goal. They'll run it with Kamara. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Alvin Kamara with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Now the try here for the point after. It's good and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, 
shoot it. And he found it all right, took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. To throw is Dobbs. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Alante Taylor credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. So the opening drive of this third quarter, they're trying to set the tone for the second half. And without a doubt, they did exactly that. I've known coaches who have said the first five minutes of each half are so important to do exactly what you said, which is set the tone. I've also heard coaches talk about the first five plays. Let's go out and be aggressive right off the top. That's exactly what they did. Here is third and quite a ways. Now Dobbs. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Cameron Jordan so tough to block as he gets in there to record the sack. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and the Saints will have a short field in front of them. They take over here, first and 10. Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. The Omen's effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball, because there's a rhythm that gets established, right? When you're running it well and the, and the back's getting the ball and he's in sync and reading blocks and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't met an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to pay dirt. Second down and it's Kamara again. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Car now on first down. Over the middle, into the hands of Michael Thomas. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. A give to Kamara running right. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Again, it's Kamara. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara taking it in from the 20. And the Saints are able to extend their lead. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone, I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground. And he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Extra point attempt to come here. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Five plays there on that drive. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints' kick team booms it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. They're down now 24-14. Work to do as they come up on a first and 10. 
They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Now a give to Madison. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. And that's another big-time run. And it sure looks like the leverage game is being won by the offensive line. They're the low man on just about every snap, and they're winning, pushing back the defensive front and creating great space for their runners. Off the play fake, here's Dobbs. Throw caught there by Osborne. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a second and two. On play action, it's Dobbs. That is incomplete. We have going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Dobbs. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage. Get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards. Turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and 10. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Dobbs is throwing. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for him. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. On first down, Dobbs to throw. Got a man open, that's Harry. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. Second down and four. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. On second down, this is Madison. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Throwing here, Dobbs. Finds his tight end, Oliver, here outright. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 
His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Back to throw. Dobbs. Completes it to the fullback, Ham. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilized more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put yeah, there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. 55 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Dobbs to throw. Being chased at, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Joshua Dobbs taking it in from a yard out. And the Vikings have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Joseph connects on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. On the return, here's Rashid Shaheed. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt continues to find it throughout this game and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live he might want to make an offer in the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest he knows how to get there and boy he looks happy when he does he's already bought all the property in the end zone that's the problem he's going to sell to himself now from the 25 here second down and eight Now Carr. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Play action. Now it's Carr. And he is caught. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That one goes for 36 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line. And we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop. And that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. The slot man in motion right. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. 
That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Throwing his car on third down. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara, 42 yards. And the Saints will add to their fourth quarter lead. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Extra point right down the middle. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Back to throw Dobbs. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And Hawkinson gonna have the Vikings first down as he'll be brought down at the 38-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think they were looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed, I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. That good for 19 and a first down. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big gain. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash too. Back to the ground on first down, here's Madison. And he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes, and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And an excellent job of finding the opening as he's got this now all the way down to the 22. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. Another carry now for Madison. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. 
I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Dobbs now on second down. And he's got it. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And he's turning in a nice performance. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier, and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it. I think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty, he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say, guys, two's not going to be enough. You better get some more guys trying to cover me. He knows how to get open downfield. Here's Dobbs to throw. Touchdown, Vikings! Jordan Addison, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings have got it back to within a score. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Joseph on for the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Jordan Addison capped it off with a touchdown catch. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game, and you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? They work with the four-minute offense is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Now it's Kamara in the passing game. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring us to a third and four. He's on to kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. Now Dobbs. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Osborne. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll make it second down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And they've got to go thank the guys on D. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. Over the middle complete. That's Osborne. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. On first and 10, Dobbs. And this will be incomplete. 
physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Dobbs throw taken in by Hawkinson here. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 37. He has been terrific today, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely running flawless two-minute drill right here. This has been quarterbacking 101 with a flourish. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now Dobbs. Catch is made by Harry. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. I'm starting to wonder here. Are they trying to prevent winning? Because right now, they're laying back and they're picking them apart, moving the ball downfield. I think they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback. Here's first and ten. Dobbs. This goes out wide for Madison. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. Here comes second down. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. A big play needed, no doubt. Third and long. He'll look to throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. A costly sack. They'll have to use a timeout here. And barring a defensive penalty, they'll be looking at one final play. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And that is no good. Wide to the right. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. Uh, we so often think of these kickers as automatic at any distance, and it's just not the case because when you start talking about 50-plus yards, it's still a tough one to connect on. This one ends up no good, and that should put to rest any chance of this game getting to overtime. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. And that one will go down in the books as just a one-play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half. 
and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them.